In this video, I'm going to show you how to update your images once you're ready to publish a final e-learning project for your customer. Uh, in this case here, I've been using a temporary image for this particular uh, image of a person using a computer. So he's sitting at his computer and you can clearly see the Shutterstock logo or the uh, um, the, the watermark across the image. And while that's fine for uh, preliminary versions of the course, once you're ready to publish and put it out there for all to see, you're going to want to update it with the actual purchased uh, stock image from the stock image company. I happen to be using Shutterstock for this particular image but I'm not affiliated with them in any way. So I could just as easily use iStock or Getty Images or any number of other stock photography companies. So here's my image, here's the original image. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and find this in the library panel. And this should open up the library panel if it's not already open for you and highlight the particular image in question. Now I can double click this image to show me the image property window and this will show me information about the original image. It's a PNG file. It was originally located on my desktop. Uh, these are the dimensions and obviously I want to match those same dimensions. Uh, it's got smoothing turned on and there are some buttons that allow me to do different things. Uh, I can update the image, so if I have an updated version already on my desktop, clicking update will reload it from that original location and update all the instances of this photo being used in the course. I can import an entirely new image. Keep in mind though that when you do that, it's going to retain the dimension, so it could skew a, an existing image. So if you've purchased this from Shutterstop, and Shutterstock, and I've of course done so, um, but the original image from Shutterstock does not match the images or the aspect ratio that I'm using here. So I'm going to need to edit it first. And that's conveniently the next button, edit. And also you can check the usage so you can find out which, which slides this particular image. I'm only using it one time in this course on slide 5. Uh, but let's, uh, let's edit this first of all. So what's going to happen is it's going to load uh, Photoshop and I'm using Photoshop 5.1. I'm just going to fill the screen with this and enlarge the image a little bit here. I personally like to have my navigator panel so I can see a preview for resizing purposes, my history open so that I can see what I've done, and also uh, my layers open because I do work with layers a little bit. Um, the first thing I want to do is actually uh, open up the Shutterstock version of this image, uh, the one that was purchased from Shutterstock.com. So let's uh, go to File and Open, and it's on my desktop, so let me just find the Shutterstock version. There it is there and click on that and then click open. That's going to open up a new tab. So here's the fresh version uh, directly from Shutterstock. I'm going to hit Control A to select the entire image and then I'm going to hit Control C to copy it. Alternatively I could do both of those. I could do the select all from the select drop down box and select copy to do the, the same function as well. But I've already done so, so we'll switch to the e-learning version of this. And I'm just going to go paste. Now, the, the strange thing that's occurred is that it's taken a really tiny image from my e-learning course. If you remember correctly, the e-learning course was only 279 pixels by 340 pixels. Well, I purchased this from, from uh, Shutterstock, and of course, they're not going to make a version available for that size. Theirs is, you know, 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels or some such large size like that. So let's go back to Photoshop. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to transform 
the scale of this layer that I've just added because by pasting that image it's created a new layer over top of the original image which is my background right now presently. So I'm going to change the scale and you'll see selection handles here and here. Now you can see the actual pixels are 239 by uh, 3583 pixels uh, or uh, you know in, in terms of percentage it calculates that as 100 by 100 percent. I'm going to maintain the aspect ratio. Now what I typically do because I don't always use the full image within mine, I just use the selection handles and select that and drag it back up and then resize it and then drag it back up and resize it and I know this seems very manual but it's just what I'm used to. I guess alternatively I could be uh, selecting these these images here and just resizing them either manually or typing in a new number let's say. Uh, oh, I think I'm going to regret making that decision. Hang on. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think I probably could have put like 100 uh, you know, or something to that effect, and you know, I don't, again, that's not what I do. I use the simple selection handles, and like I said, maybe there's a better way to do this. Um, in fact, I've done it a few times. Maybe if I select there, and we'll just make that zero, and zero, and then we'll make this 25% scale, or 10% scale, yeah, so we're closer here. And the rest of the way I can do manually. So uh, again, I'm just uh, oh, no, I'm not doing that right. Yeah, okay, so so now I can basically try to copy what I did before. I don't have to be exact because of course, you know, um, I can make this look however I wish. I'm going to try and go with an image that closely approximates what I had before. I think that's pretty close there. I like to leave a little bit around the outside too in case, uh, you know, I don't like to go tight because uh, what sometimes happens is you see um, one pixel show through. Um, you know, I kind of like this larger where we can get a little tighter in on the, the, the person doing the research. So I'm going to click my check mark now. I'm committing to that transform. So now I have a nice clean image that no longer has the Shutterstock logo in there. Now because I have layers, before I commit returning this back to, um, to Adobe Captivate, I do need to go down to the layer drop down menu and select flatten image. And this will remove the layers and create a single layer uh, of what I can see on my screen right now. So I have that, it's done. Now I can close this, I can simply close Photoshop and it will save that file to the Adobe Captivate course or update the image in the Adobe Captivate course. So now I can click OK, I've got a nice clean image of my man doing research on the computer there. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce, uh, please, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you thought this video was particularly good, don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up.